give Eve a super warm welcome, maybe some whistles as well as some whoops. Hiya. Um, I'm Eve and I'm going to talk to you about user needs driven leadership. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how I got to user needs driven leadership because I have no idea if you guys know the intricacies of this, so bear with me. So I'm going to talk a bit about background and learning and then um, the user needs driven leadership thing is kind of what got me the job that I do have, which is um, dev team lead for NHS UK, um, for NHS Digital. James actually was on the panel that hired me, so it must have been something in there. So uh, I'm going to talk about the approach and the solutions and KPIs, how um, um, I've, I've kind of pitched the user uh, needs driven leadership. And then I'm going to do a bit about joining us as a dev, um, of course, because, hey, I have a platform. So um, some of the background and learning. Um, about a year ago, I switched from Ruby, which is from this side of the panel, to that side of the panel, which is in, to JavaScript world. Not because I think that JavaScript is better than Ruby, but because um, there's so much that you can do where you, you do some user research and you go, to the, you go to the customer and you show them all, all of this user research. And there's so much time where, where you can say, well, I still wanted yellow. And you kind of say, but the user research says something else. Well, um, this is why I've kind of wanted to move from this particular team to this particular team where I will I get to use uh, some of the GDS principles. Um, not sure if you guys know. Do you guys know GDS? Uh, Government Digital Service? Hands up if you know about it. Yep. So in the GDS world, um, I've kind of like, I wanted to learn about all the different uh, life cycles of, of a project starting from discovery and all the way to live. I've, I've learned about service design. I've learned about the GDS principles. Um, I've learned about user needs um, and how they can basically um, drive development. Uh, rather than have a stakeholder that kind of tells you what the features should be, um, you have to kind of make them up from the needs. And, and test them all the time. So a bit like the MVP thing that we were talking about previously, but more about kind of figuring out uh, the, the requirements as well of, uh, uh, as that. So I've, I've wanted to learn all about, all about these different stages, but I joined the team um, in the beta stage. And um, I've, I've kind of seen this interesting uh, approach where we were doing some of the research and prototype branches for um, some of the new features that we were wanting to test. But then we also have like our product uh, branch, and they seemed a bit disjointed. <laughs> we were doing all of these tests on, on the prototype, but then we had to redo it in, in production as well. So instead, um, we've kind of, let's, let's put it this way, our designer was pretty um, slick given and also quite close to what we do as developers. If, if you're doing your prototype and you're using Heroku strategies for, for different deployments, you know your stuff. You know more about uh, development that you actually want to admit. So we, we tried to um, kind of incorporate him into our, uh, into our dev world. And we went for experimental branches on the actual product. And he, he learned quite, quite a bit about how to, how to do that. It needed a bit of help, but it's all about learning, right? So um, we, instead of, um, we, we, we had some learning time uh, added to that. It's not just about releasing features, it's also about building the team. Um, we had an improved product. Uh, we had a shorter feedback loops. Everybody likes those. And we've, we've done quite a, a lot of cross-functional pairing. I then had the opportunity to kind of be involved in the discovery stage. And in the discovery stage, um, I'm not sure if you follow me on Twitter, but I seem to talk about chlamydia a lot because, hey, that's what we were doing in discovery, and it was amazing. And in discovery, developers don't get to, don't get to do that much development. But we were a very small team, so because we're T-shaped people, 
I got to do some user intent survey analysis. I did 2i, which I didn't know what the hell was before I met some designers. Um, I've done some note takings and short questions and user interviews. I didn't really do the user interviews myself, especially with this kind of topic, but still, I was taking notes. Um, I've done stakeholder interviews. I've, I've even managed to do a mock interview on a train, pretending that I have chlamydia for our user researchers to kind of take uh, take it into uh, the next day for the lab. That, was, that went fine. <laughs> um, I've done some proto persona building in order to do that mock interview. Um, I've done desk research and assumption gathering, and all of that kind of helped me in, in uh, my data scouting and some of the user journeys that I was going to do after. The next stage was about inter-team collaboration. While I was doing discovery, I still wanted to meddle in other things, like the development, and I managed to um, realize that some of the things that our product team was doing would be useful for another product team. But hey, because we are now in different silos rather than in the actual dev silos, which we used to be a while ago, they, the product teams don't really talk to each other that much. So um, I ended up kind of possibly getting coupling some dependencies, but hey, everybody does that. And, uh, and kind of talked about um, getting um, an, elastic, um, an elastic search container uh, to a different team and helping them with that. Um, all of these ideas weren't really new. Um, the shorter feedback loops and some of the DevOps practices that I was looking at weren't really new, but I didn't really know about them until I started reading books. So the Lean UX is kind of the, the next step from the Lean startup in a way, and it's all about design and prototyping. And the Phoenix project is, is a really good story about how DevOps saved the world, so I, I highly recommend it. All of this long-winded things and all of the things that I've been doing were related to how I managed to do the dev team lead application stage. And all of this learning in, helped me to um, pitch what I was going to do in the first 100 days. This is the, the, a really badly drawn diagram of, the, of where we operate in NHS Digital. We are pretty much about there as a dev team but we, we get to interact with all of these people. So I've, I've kind of focused the pitch for the dev team job for, uh, I, I've, I focused on user needs because I've learned about those and they were great. And in my case, we're the developers, the wider tech teams and the senior stakeholders via KPIs. So I've identified the community problem. As I said, previously we used to have um, fun functional silos and now we have product team silos. And we need to kind of bring it back a bit. So we have, as a developer on live, NHS Beta, CMS, or RingFence team, I want to so that I can share my knowledge and contrib contribute. So we have all of these little fragment developers in these different teams, and they stop talking to each other, so they kind of reinvent the wheel again. So it would be a good idea to, for them to share and contribute. As a dev tech or in sales specialism lead, I want to so I can identify patterns and suggest and enable solutions. Um, in, in this particular case, you want to be able to bring some people together so they can, they can work together. Especially, we have some functional teams like operations, so it would be a good idea to, to move that, to, to make that a bit closer. So introducing tech reviews and tech Q&As is, is one of the solutions that I'm suggesting. Um, and that would improve the development community of practice by increasing collaboration and foster sharing. The second problem that I've, I've kind of identified was the implementation problem. As a developer, I want to be able to make suggestions of improvement to the status quo so that the team I'm in can operate more efficiently. As a dev team lead, I want to be able to collate central ideas from talented devs so that improvements can be uh, shared across the board. The solution is a continuous improvement board and I'm still kind of trying to get this through. Um, but it's, it's a good idea to, to share. And also, one share, sharing between the team is fine. Sharing across the board is even better. Um, so through the transition to the new tech stack, we're kind of moving to a new stack. Uh, learn from past mistakes and improve processes. So this is my pitch for joining us. We are looking for talented developers to join NHS UK. Uh, we have teams that work in Python, JS. Ruby and C Sharp. 
uh, we, you would be in delivering with a product team, a, a cross-functional team, and um, there's an engagement with NHS Digital. There are 40 developers in NHS UK, but there's 150 of us in the software dev profession. So if you want to kind of join us, contact Sean, and thank you. Woo! Great timing. Fantastic timing, well done.